civil society has a huge role to play more generally in monitoring government performance and monitoring the services that citizens are supposed to be getting and in mobilizing political participation because democracy cannot succeed unless citizens come into the political process, not only vote, but become active in political parties and in groups that are engaging and linking up with the political parties and demanding uh, their accountability uh, and access to them. And so when citizens become involved in the political process, um, enter political parties, uh, force them to become more democratic internally, which is another very important innovation that is deepening democracy in many uh, countries, uh, democracy becomes more vibrant, more responsive, more participatory, uh, and of uh, higher quality. We're also seeing as well, I think, the potential for um, coalitions of different types of actors to push through reforms to have more vigorous accountability, transparency, open budgeting uh, is a very good example where um, not only is the budget open to public scrutiny, both in its design and in its expenditures, but it's, it's open to public uh, scrutiny um, through the proactive provision of information on websites that is intelligible, that is accessible to ordinary citizens. Uh, and reform coalitions come about when civil society presses from below, when it partners or allies with um, public spirited officials in the government or the public sector or the party system, and it, when, it, when it finds allies in the international community as well to get assistance uh, from and some ideas and sometimes some technologies. The open government partnership, um, which has as one of its most important priorities, open budgeting, is a very important example of this. Uh, and you can see the work and the membership of this very uh, promising network by just Googling open government partnership and going to the website and seeing not only a number of states that have joined and made a commitment to honor the principles of opening budget, open budgeting and transparent government, but civil society partners as well. And so here, when you get um, reform-minded actors within a government, um, innovators and activists uh, and experts within a country's civil society, together with peers in other countries and international organizations, that um, want to make these commitments, this is an extremely powerful synergistic combination that can come together to uh, promote reform and reinforce uh, the goodwill and the energy of reform actors within a country. This is one of the ways and only one of the ways that uh, international actors can support democratic development and the improvement in the quality of governance uh, within a country. I might mention as well um, that we are seeing other development progress institutionally in Latin America, in Africa, in some of the new democracies of the former communist countries and of Asia in improving the quality of governance. Even a country that was as uh, riddled with corruption as Indonesia has been historically has begun making some very serious progress with the creation of a counter-corruption uh, commission uh, that has had some serious institutional leadership and is actually beginning to prosecute people. There's a lot being done by democracy promotion organizations in Europe, uh, in the United States, and elsewhere in the world to support democratic civil society organizations directly with uh, grants that are carefully monitored uh, and with technological training, including in what I call liberation technology, how they can use social media and the internet safely uh, to promote their cause and to communicate 
uh, to advocate for democracy, human rights, better governance, to monitor elections, to monitor abuses of human rights, and to engage in uh, more effective reporting along these lines. Uh, international actors, particularly development agencies, but uh, non-governmental organizations as well, are forming a wide variety of partnerships with states uh, and with non-governmental actors to improve the capacity, uh, both human capacity and technical capacity, of these kinds of organizations to uh, generate uh, better governance uh, and uh, deliver uh, sustained improvements uh, in human well-being. So um, this cannot be done uh, alone by the international community. Uh, one thing we've learned is uh, international actors who want to do good need uh, the partnership of people on the ground um, who are taking the lead uh, if um, efforts to promote democracy and better governance are going to be well targeted and are going to be viewed as legitimate in the country. But the civil society actors and the state elites who have uh, uh, a will uh, for and an understanding of the need for reform, they need the space, they need the freedom, and they need the climate of um, uh, readiness for governance reform that can enable these changes to take place. And we know, we have considerable evidence, that when countries commit to governance reform, when they rein in bribery and corruption, when they reduce the burden of regulation, when they improve the independence of the courts, when they promote greater transparency in the functioning of government and more open media, that all of these contribute uh, to more successful economic development, a greater sustainability of development, uh, less of a burden on the environment because people are monitoring how development happens uh, to achieve the environmental sustainability that they need for their own uh, human well-being uh, and the well-being of their communities. Uh, and this is how just, sustainable, broad-based development unfolds.